What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, US Democrats want the miners' data collected. We gotta talk about that. Also, Rigel Miner version 1.3.5 absolutely smokes the competition. We gotta go over that. Also, we got a release date for the 4070 and Flux has halved. Now what? So before we get into it, do me a favor, hit the like and hit the subscribe and let's take a look at the market. So right now, time of recording is 10.30 p.m. on February 7th, 2023. Bitcoin is coming in at 23,281, Ethereum at 1680, XRP at 40 cents, Cardano at 39.9 cents, Dogecoin at 9 cents, Polygon at $1.29, Solana at 23.92, Polkadot at 6.94, Litecoin at $101, ETH Classic coming in at $23.13, Monero at $168, Toncoin at $2.38. Let's go ahead and take a look at some GPU mineable coins. Let's start with Flux and see what it's doing. So we just halved about an hour ago, and price is currently sitting at $0.97, cents, up about 4.3% in the last 24 hours. It did pull back immediately following the halving down to about $0.96, cents, but it's coming back up. Everybody wants to know, you know, what's the prediction? What's going to happen next? You know, it's all a guess. I don't have a crystal ball. I think that if the market continues to trend sideways, I could see Flux pulling back to the 85 to 87 cent range. And then if the rest of the market continues to trend up and to the right, then perhaps we get up over a dollar and we stay over a dollar. But I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. And then next, let's take a look at Radiant. So Radiant is pretty much sideways, sitting at 0 0.0006487. Then we've got Dynex coming in at a 5% increase. It's actually dropped off quite a bit. Uh, it was up about 15% or so, uh, currently sitting at 11 cents. And then Nexa is down 8.64%, sitting at 0 0.00001049, actually down about 6% now. And then let's take a look at Caspa. So Caspa is up 3.63%, also had a pretty good day today, sitting at 0 0.007392. And let's go ahead and take a look at profitability on a 3070 at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So right now, Nexa is on top. And you'll notice that the hash rate here has changed substantially from what it was previously. And power looks to be incorrect in my opinion, but we'll go over that here in just a minute. Currently sitting at 12 cents a day in profit. Dynex at 7 cents a day in profit. Radiant also up to 7 cents a day in profit. And that is because difficulty on Radiant has dropped dramatically. Cortex sitting at 6 cents. Neoxa 3 cents. Hmm, Neoxa must have had a pump. Ergo at two cents, Alethium at two cents, ETHW and oh, yeah, Ethereum, proof of work and Alethium at two cents, Conflux at one cent, Zellhash on NiceHash is profitable at one cent, which is kind of surprising. And then Caspa is break even. And what else we got? Ravencoin is break even. Everything else is pretty much negative. Let's move on to CPU mining profitability. So on a Ryzen 9 5950X, Avian is coming in on top at 20 cents, excuse me, 27 cents a day in profit. Panda Knight at 23 cents, Monero at 6 cents, Pulsar at 5 cents, Raptorium negative 3 cents, Darrow negative 6 cents, Vitorium negative 10 cents. And let's take a look at ASIC miner profitability. KA3 coming in at $42.04, K7 coming in at $24.79, and L7, $18.07, a gold shell SC6, $9.52, what else we got? Jazz Miner X4, $3.67, gold shell KD6 at $1.62, I'll scroll down a little way so you can see the rest. And let's move on and talk about, let's see, what do we want to talk about first? There's a really interesting article that I want to cover about the Democrats asking for the collection of minor data. Um, but for now, 
if you guys did not catch the video that I posted just a few hours before posting this one, we did a head-to-head -head competition between Rigel Miner and LOL Miner, version 1.67 versus 1.3.5, and the results are shocking. Um, if you are aware of a static pool, in other words, a pool that does not change difficulty or have variable difficulty, I would like to do a test to determine the actual hash rate at the pool as well as total rewards over 24 hours. Uh, so if you are aware of that pool, please leave a comment down below, but definitely check out that video. You're going to be shocked at the increase on Rigel Miner versus LOL Miner. And let's go ahead and talk about this article here. So U.S. Democrats want more info on agencies' crypto mining data collection. Elizabeth Warren, my favorite person, and seven other Democrats want to know how much the Environmental Protection Agency and Energy Department know about crypto mining energy draws. United States Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Michael Regan and Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm were the recipients February 6th of another letter on the environmental impact of cryptocurrency mining. Eight Democratic lawyer, lawmakers headed by Elizabeth Warren reached out to the offices or to the officials this time. The eight lawmakers acknowledged previous replies to official correspondents asking about the agency's information gathering authority as it relates to energy used in crypto mining. Now they have followed up with a series of questions on practical matter relating to information gathering and the use of the information they receive. They wrote, The urgency of the climate crisis combined with rapid growth in crypto mining in the U.S. dictates a comprehensive mandatory disclosure and data collection regime. We therefore urge your agencies to work together to address the lack of information about crypto mining's energy use and environmental impacts and require mandatory reporting of this information from crypto miners as rapidly as possible. The authors of the letter, Senate Banking Committee member Warren, along with Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, Edward Markey, and Jeff Merkley, as well as Representatives Jared Huffman, Rashida, Talib, Katie Porter, and Richard Durbin also ask about Energy Department outreach for its Energy Star program and possible technical assistance from the Department for Communities considering hosting crypto miners. They gave the addresses until March 6 to respond. Warren is a vociferous critic of the cryptocurrency industry who has always written to U.S. Securities and Exchange Commissioner Gary Gensler about the agency's authority to regulate crypto and to acting controller of the currency, Michael Fisieu, asking him to withdraw guidance for banks on handling crypto and join in on interdepartmental regulatory effort. Regan has received other letters from lawmakers regarding cryptocurrency. After receiving a letter last year critical of crypto signed by Huffman and 22 other lawmakers, another 14 members of Congress sent him a letter supporting the crypto industry. So it's getting rough out there, guys, and it is only going to get worse. Terror hosting, if you're listening, um, just be prepared for something like this. You may have to start providing data that you didn't know you were going to have to provide. So definitely something to be aware of. Um, obviously, I think that they're going to target major entities. They're probably not looking at the hobbyist miners, but it's only a matter of time before it comes, guys. So fair warning. Anyways, moving on. So take a look at the farm real quick. We got Rigel Miner 1.3.5 running. Here's some 3070 TIs for you, some hash rates, some wattage. Let's go ahead and look at some 3070s and some 3080s. And then we'll go ahead and look at some 3060 TIs, 3080 Ti, 3070 TIs. These are all in the same rig. Now that you got a little sneak peek there, I'm going to move on. Just kind of glance over this uh, spreadsheet now. A more in-depth detail uh, will be linked for the video that I just posted earlier this morning comparing LOL Miner version 1.67 versus Rigel Miner. 
or Ragile, <laughs> Rigel Miner. Uh, but yeah, if you want to pause the video and take a look at those, go for it. And moving on, we've got a expected release date for the 4070 in April. NVIDIA has just shared updated embargo information for the upcoming GeForce RTX 4070 non-TI model. The company did not provide any date as yet, but they informed board partners that the launch should happen in April. All embargo information is currently to be determined, but the on-shelf, aka the actual hard launch, is to happen in April without specifying which part of the month. NVIDIA embargo information is provided on a frequent basis, but it is prone to changes. In fact, we have seen many embargoes that were completely changed, pushed back, or even canceled. That said, there is a lot that can still change, so keep that in mind. The RTX 4070 has seen numerous specs between mentioned over the past few months. Uh, the PG191 SKU 343 was mentioned by hardware leaker Copike 7 Kimmy last month as a new SKU for the RTX 4070. This SKU is listed alongside 344 and 345, which are subvariants of the same card as Copike clarified today. Uh, the RTX 4070 is expected to feature 5,888 5, CUDA cores and 12GB of GDDR6X memory. This model should basically be cut down. RTX 4070 Ti with lower TDP. Earlier plans have shown that the that Nvidia wants to start mass production of the chips this month, so April seems to be within the typical launch schedule. And I think it was maybe about three weeks ago when we covered this. I think the expected release date of the 4070 and 4060 Ti was going to be end of Q1. So, yeah, it does look like it's getting pushed back out a little bit, uh, hopefully in April. I don't know if I can hold out that long. I'm really, really anxious to get my hands on a 40 series card, but I, I really feel like the 4070 is going to be more efficient than a 4070 Ti at mining. Uh, 4070 Ti is more efficient than a 4080 and a 4090 on most algorithms, so it'll be interesting to see where the 4070 comes in line. And then lastly, it's done. It's over. Flux having is completed and for me this happened just a couple of hours ago for you it's going to be probably at least eight hours or so before you see this video but i do want to go ahead and take a look at the difficulty change so currently sitting at 106.91 let me refresh this page yes we have dropped some more so now down to 99.72 and if we take a look at the monthly difficulty it shows that we spiked around 154 um, but if we look at the weekly I think we actually spiked in the 160s yeah 165 so to drop from 165 down to 99 that's you know roughly about 60% drop in difficulty and a lot of us have been speculating how much the difficulty would drop um, I suspected that we would drop somewhere between 40 and 50 percent initially. Uh, if you look at this yearly chart, it shows that we topped out at 129.38, and we're currently sitting at 99.72. So according to this, you know, further zoomed out chart, we've only dropped about 30 percent. But I would imagine over the course of the next week, we're going to continue to drop. Um, if flux price continues to pump then perhaps flux will get back up there into the profitability range but for now i'm going to say that it doesn't seem likely but you know the price of flux in my opinion is really going to be determined by the rest of the market mainly bitcoin and what it does and uh, i think we'll find out here in the next week or so which direction we're going to be heading now this has been a pretty short video sorry guys i'm trying to rush through it because i put out the other video so i've made two videos this evening and it's time to get ready for bed so hope you enjoy the content do me a favor on the way out hit the like and hit the subscribe and i will see you guys on the next one